Okay, hi everyone. My name's Kit. Welcome to my channel. As you can see today, I'm joined by a guest. So, um, Tom, do you want to introduce yourself? Because I guess people might not know you. Yep, sure. Uh, my name's Tom, and uh, I'm married uh, to my wife Jess, and we have three kids. And at the moment, um, I'm living in the UK. Uh, so, from Australia, friends with Kit. I've known Kit for ages. Yes. Um, but we moved. <laughs> Uh, we moved to the UK about a, oh, almost exactly a year ago, um, and I'm doing a PhD at Cambridge University. Um, so I'm a minister um, uh, back in Sydney, um, but I've taken, uh, I guess, a break from that for a couple of years uh, to study more uh, in the Bible. And so my PhD is actually on a book in the Bible, a book called John, um, and yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. I started last year and it should go for three years. Okay, wow. So you, you just started one year into a three-year PhD. Um, so yes, that's I guess, the plan. Why did you pick the book of John? Like, is there something unique about John? And I guess for some of us who've never read it before, what is John about? Sure, yeah. So uh, the book of John is one of the four Gospels uh, in the Bible. And um, if you don't know what that is, just a, a Gospel is a biography uh, of Jesus. Uh, so there are four different biographies of Jesus in the Bible, uh, just telling us about um, his life, what he said, what he did. Um, and John is one of those biographies. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at, at, at this particular life of Jesus. Um, and... What's John about? I guess at the heart of it, um, you could sum, sum up John in uh, the idea of light and life. Mm -hmm. um, so um, in John's gospel, right at the start, uh, when John's introducing, uh, introducing it in the prologue, he says about Jesus, in him was uh, life and that life was the light of mankind. And these ideas of, of light and life uh, kind of get carried throughout the gospel and I think sum up what, what the gospel is all about. Yeah. Um, I find it really interesting because I've never really thought of like, like the John's gospel as light. Um, did you want to mm. just expand a bit like on that? Because, you know, in my head, I'm just imagining a light globe in like a dark yeah. place. Like I was... Yeah, well, I mean, that, 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 that's good. That, that's kind of the image that, that we're given. Yeah. So, um, so right at the start of the gospel, um, John says that um, a light uh, has come into the world. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this idea of Jesus as a light kind of goes on throughout uh, the gospel. Jesus even says later on, I am the light of the world and anyone who follows me uh, will never walk in darkness. So um, Jesus describes himself as light. And really what, what, uh, what, what that means in John's gospel is that Jesus is the one who gives us the truth uh, or, or, or real meaning in life. Uh, he tells us uh, the answers to life, I guess. You could put it like that. Um, and so Jesus is the one who reveals the truth, which is really relevant. You know, like everybody is trying to work out what life's about. Everyone's trying to work out what, what the answers are to life. What is the truth? Yep. Um, well, straight up, Jesus says, I'm the truth. I'm the one who can give you the truth. Uh, and, yeah. and that's what he means by light. Yeah. It sounds so good. Like you don't have to like struggle to work it out for yourself if he's just going to tell us the answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, it, it's interesting. Like that, that's one of the interesting things about John, about the gospel of John and about the claims that Jesus makes, because I think for most of us, we kind of think that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to work out the truth for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I think we also realise that we're, we're really limited in that. So, mm -hmm. you know, how can I work out what, it, you know, the truth is in the world? Yeah. Um, that's not really possible for me. Maybe I can kind of stumble into some truth, uh, kind of like as if I was in a dark room, you know, at night time or something, and I kind of stumbling around, feeling my way through, you know, I might stumble into some truth. But it's unlikely that I will work out what the truth is to life. Yeah. Um, but Jesus makes this, this sort of crazy claim that he can tell you what mm. the truth is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a bold claim. It's, it's yeah. a pretty out there claim. 
Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because yeah, one of my friends yeah. and I we were reading um, the Bible, and you know, we were chatting about the purpose of life and the meaning of life, and like searching for that and looking for that. Um, mm. And you know, if Jesus is just going to, you know, it, reading John's Gospel can help us, you know, understand because Jesus yeah. has that answer. That's that's so great. Mm. Yeah. So I guess I guess there's kind of there's two ways that you could approach truth. So this is going to be philosophical now, but <laughs> there's, there's kind of two ways you could think about truth. Um, we we can speculate about what the truth is, uh, and that's kind of a, a, a ground up approach. So we're, we we kind of look around at the world, we look at the way life is, and we kind of try and piece it all together and work out what the truth is. And, and I guess you could call that speculation. We're trying to work it out. Yeah. And I think that pretty much describes what everyone's doing. You know, that, that's kind of what all the religions are in the world. That's what all the philosophies are in the world. Yeah. That's what all the right. memes on Facebook are in the world. You know, it's just people trying to piece things together and work out what life's like. Yeah. But in John, um, we get Jesus coming at it from a, a different approach. And, and I guess that's what we call revelation, which is Jesus revealing, showing us what the truth is. Yeah. And the only reason he can do that is because he claims to be um, God himself, uh, which is, a, 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 again, a pretty out there claim. Yeah. But he, uh, it, right at the start of the Gospel of John, like the very first thing we're told is that Jesus is God. He's the creator God. Nothing was made without him. Everything that was made was made by him. And because he is God, he is the only one qualified uh, to tell us the truth, right. uh, to show us the answers to life. Um, and so that, that's kind of the key difference between what Jesus claims and, and what we often think about in terms of truth. We're trying to kind of speculate, work it out, but Jesus is actually, I can reveal it to you yeah. because I'm God. Yeah. Yeah, and that imagery like you were saying earlier of the light is that revealing aspect. Yeah. Yeah, so, right. That's right. And, yeah, sorry, go on. Oh, no, I was going to say... Um, uh, I don't know if you want to talk more about the light because I was just going to ask you about the second imagery that you talked about. So there's Jesus as the light and then Jesus yep. as life. So I wasn't sure if you wanted to. Yeah. That. Yeah. So, so Jesus not only says he's, he's the light, uh, but regularly throughout the gospel, he says that he's the life. And he gives us all these kind of images uh, to help us understand that. Mm -hmm. um, so one of them, for example, is he says, I am the bread of life. Um, and, uh, and, and the, the image is, you know, bread is something you, you have to eat in order to live. If, if you don't eat, you, you die. Yeah. Um, and Jesus is saying, well, actually I am, I am spiritual bread. Uh, I am bread that if you eat, uh, that is, uh, if, if, if you, if you come to Jesus, uh, then you will live and not just live for a, a little bit of time, but live forever. Yeah. Um, so Jesus not only has the answers to life, um, but he's actually the source of life. Uh, he can give us life forever. Mm. Yeah, and that's another thing that, 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 that John is talking about. Yeah. When you talk about bread, because, you know, I used to work as a dietitian, I just think, like, think bread is not an optional extra. Like, you know, like bread, yeah. like Jesus is saying he's a staple. He's the core food, yeah. Yeah. And, and again, like uh, another image he uses is his living water. Again, water is just one of those essentials that you need. Yeah. Uh, and yet uh, he, he, he is the source of life uh, yeah. really. And, and that's, that, that, that's, um, that's another massive claim he's making. Yeah. 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 That's definitely true. Yeah. Water. Like you can't, you can't live without water. If you just, yeah, if yeah. You don't drink water for three days, you know, that's yeah. You'll die. So you need water. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Which, you know, I mean, I think is, it, it's, a, it's again, it's a helpful thing for us to think about because obviously we're not, oh, well, you know, I'm not dead right now. You're not dead yeah. right now. Um, but death is definitely something that we all are going to face one day. Yeah. Um, and so the gospel is trying to deal with this, you know, really weighty truth about death and how it's a reality um, and I don't know, I, I guess I've just sort of been thinking, you know, um, like with everything that's going on at the moment with COVID and all that kind of stuff, like death is real mm. and, um, 
you can't escape it. You know, even if even if you you escape this pandemic, it doesn't mean that you've escaped death. And so it's a huge claim for Jesus to actually say, actually, I can give you life beyond death. I can give you eternal life. Yeah. Um, so, Tom, you were saying that your PhD is about on John's gospel and the aspect you were looking at is like about believing, like to believe mm. and not believe. Um, so I guess if for some of us, we might, be, we might believe in Jesus, but some of us who don't believe in Jesus, can you just like mm. talk to us about, um, yeah, just the idea of believing? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, I think believing is actually a, a, a simple concept um but but it can seem tricky when we think about it so uh, uh, believing in jesus is 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 as simple as saying it's just accepting um who jesus says he is and then trusting in him uh really or, or receiving what he has to offer you so if jesus says he's light and life uh that means taking him at his word so saying okay you're light you have the answers to life. I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you in in what you have to say. Um, In him saying that he's the life, it's saying, okay, I'm going to to come to you for life. I'm going to come to you for eternal life and and trusting you for that and ask you for that. That's really all um, all we're talking about when we talk about believing. Um, We're talking about trusting in Jesus and, and receiving what he has to offer for us. But obviously, we have um, the ability to say, no, I don't want that either. Uh, you know, so, so if, if, if I don't want life, if I don't want light from Jesus, then that's uh, what, what Jesus would say is that's not believing in him. Mm. Um, but Jesus would say, well, that has consequences. You know, it, um, if he really is the light uh, and you reject him, well, that actually means you're in darkness. That means you won't know the truth. And you won't live according to the truth. You won't live um, the way that we're meant to live, um, the way that God created us to live. Similarly, if you reject the life, um, well, you know, we might think we're fine, um, but actually we're one day going to face death and we won't have life because we've said, I don't want it. Um, It's a little bit like an illustration I've I've used sometimes is we're kind of like phones uh, but without a charger. Right. So, um, like, you know, we, we, we look good. We can do lots of cool stuff and, and impressive stuff, but the battery's slowly wearing down. Right. Um, yeah. And we're, we're disconnected to our source of life. Mm. We're disconnected from Jesus. And so um, if we don't come to him, eventually that, that battery level is going to keep on dying down. And one day we will die. Um, and so we need to come to Jesus uh, for life. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You need to kind of tie in both the light and the life into that mobile phone analogy. Yeah, I don't know. It's got the flashlight on as well, and you're in a <laughs> dark alley or something, something like that. I don't know. But um, yeah, yeah. Basically, we need we need um, Jesus, and and so believing is about receiving it. Um, I guess another analogy you could use, t- going back to the bread yep. image, um, I could be. I could be sitting on the couch, I could be starving to death. Um, And if I don't eat something in the next 10 minutes, you know, I'm going to die. I don't know. I'm not a dietitian, but (laughs) if I don't eat something, I'm I'm going to die. And the the bread is there on the table that, you know, but I need to reach out and take the bread Mm. and eat it. Uh, it, It's no good just looking at the bread. It's no good just being impressed by how beautiful the bread looks or how nice it smells. Mm -hmm. If I don't actually take it myself and eat it, I'll die. Yeah. Uh, in the same way, if I don't actually believe in Jesus, if I don't receive him, uh, even if I just say, oh, he's impressive, I, I like some of his, the things he says, you know, if I don't actually receive him for myself, um, I don't receive what he has to offer. Yeah. Um, and so Jesus would say, you stay in darkness and you stay in death. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of what uh, an easy way to think about believing, I think. Yeah. These are like, I guess, heavy truths, but I guess there's like, there's weightiness of what, yeah, you're just talking about. Um, if someone, you know, I guess listening and watching this YouTube video, um, what is something that they can do next, I guess, because like maybe they are interested, they want to find out more about Jesus. 
um, where do you suggest that they go or like what should they be reading? Sure, yeah. I mean, I'm just giving a really brief summary and there's a lot that I haven't said. And there's actually one thing really important that I haven't said oh, yeah. that I wanted to say before, before, but I'll come back to that. Let, let me just say this. Okay. But, um, uh, yeah, so I've only just given the briefest summary. I mean, I'm doing a PhD on one tiny topic for three years or <laughs> something, so there's a lot more to say. Um, but I, I think the best thing to do is to read the gospel for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this is this is written for us. And, and John actually says, I wrote this so that you would believe, so that you would have life. Um, so I think I think anything is, is worth looking into for yourself um, yeah. before you accept it or before you reject it. You know, you should, you know, think about it and, and look properly at it. So mm -hmm. if you haven't looked at it, have a look at it. Um, that's what I did. And, uh, and I thought, actually, I think um, what, what's being said here is true. And I think I do need life. I do need life. Uh, and, and, and I responded by believing in Jesus. And um, yeah, I just encourage anyone to grab uh, John's gospel. You can, you can look at it online. It's really easy to find. Just type in John's gospel or you can give a link or something. Yeah, I'll put a that's, link that's down really in the easy. description box. Really? It's just easier. Cool. I was ready there to go. Or even just grow a friend. Mm. Um, yeah, grab a friend who, mm. you, who's read it before, a Christian or, or someone who knows a bit about John and ask them about it while you read it. That, that could even be better because then you can, you can kind of have someone to read it with. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, I find as an extrovert, I just love doing things with other people. It's just reading, yeah. chatting about it. Like everything is better when there's people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, me too. Me too, definitely. Oh, um, sorry. Can I say yeah, one, yeah, yeah. I I, say I one thing? It's really important. It's just like central to John. Um, <laughs> that would be bad if we missed it. Sorry, I'm going to make your video go forever. But <laughs> That's fine. You asked me, I'm just going to keep on talking. Um, <laughs> so at the heart of John's gospel is, um, which I'm sure most people will be aware of, is, is Jesus dying, Jesus dying on the cross. Mm -hmm. And I won't say heaps about it now, except to say that, that is the key to light and life in John's mm. gospel. Yeah. So um, first of all, light, um, the, the greatest thing that Jesus shows us is who God is. Because remember Jesus, if Jesus is saying, I am God. So he's coming to earth. He's showing us what he's like. And if Jesus is God, what does God do when he comes to earth? Well, he, he dies on a cross mm -hmm. and he says he does it for us to, to save us. So Jesus shines light. He shows us what God's really like. He's a God who loves us so much that he would die for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just think he's amazing. So when we think of all the things we learn from Jesus, and there's a lot, the ultimate thing that we learn is that, is that God loves us, uh, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what that, you know, that famous verse, John three sixteen, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That, that's what we learn. Uh, on the cross that God loves us, which is amazing. Um, so the cross shows us the light, the truth that God loves us. Uh, but the cross also shows us life because the, the key to us having life is Jesus dying. Mm. So um, again, don't have time to get into it now, but um, we does the uh, Jesus says in, in John's gospel that we deserve to die because we've rejected God. We've, we've cut ourselves off from the source of life. We said, I don't want that. Uh, mm -hmm. and so we face death. That's what we deserve. That's our punishment for, for going our own way. Yeah. Um, and when Jesus dies on the cross, what he's actually doing is he's taking the punishment for us. So he's saying, I'll die in your place. Mm -hmm. um, and so the key to, to life is Jesus's death as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's this kind of really interesting thing, how, how Jesus' death holds it all together. It's the key to light and it's the key to life as well. Yeah, yeah. I just really want to say that because it's so central as well. Yeah, yeah it's a great way to like end because it's like um, these two imagery that you've been like discussing, it's like, yeah, culminating in this one event in this one key moment um in jesus absolutely yeah cool so tom i just wanted to ask you another question so for someone um i guess from a perspective of someone who doesn't believe in the bible or maybe is having doubts how can we actually like trust what um john has to say like how do we yeah. know it's legit yeah that's a, that's a really good question um 
The thing I, I really like about John is it's, it's a question that John, uh, who wrote it, is really aware of as well. So he's writing to people who never met Jesus themselves, who never saw Jesus or saw anything that Jesus did. And so he's really conscious of the fact that the people he's writing to are going to be suspicious and unsure and, you know, wondering how, how can I trust that this is true? So, so John actually cares about this question as well. Um, and because of that, he talks about it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So he kind of, he, he kind of creates a um, sort of a chain of knowledge okay. or a chain of, of, of revelation. So we, we already talked about how Jesus reveals the truth, right? So Jesus reveals, say, let's call it the truth from heaven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes down from heaven and he re reveals the truth of heaven or, or he reveals the truth of, about God. But then how do we know what Jesus has said? Well, John tells us about what Jesus has said. And so you've got kind of Jesus telling us about heaven and then John telling us about Jesus. Mm. So the question really comes down to, well, can I trust John and what he's telling me? And I think you can. Um, so first of all, John tells us that he was an eyewitness. He tells mm. us that. Um, specifically in the gospel twice. He says, I saw these things and I'm telling you that I saw them so that you'll believe these things. Yeah. Um, so he, he claims to be an eyewitness. Now, mm -hmm. he could be making that up. He could be lying. Okay, that, that is possible. Yeah. But there's a few reasons I think it's unlikely. Um, the first is, uh, and again, not to get too into this, but um, there is good archaeological evidence to back up the stuff that John talks about uh, that shows us that at the very least, the guy who wrote this really did live at the time of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes people think, oh, this was written, you know, centuries later and kind of made up in some big conspiracy theory. That's really unlikely because stuff that John talks about, you would only know if you actually lived there at the time. Right. So yeah. I'll give you an example. Um, so, in, in one chapter in, in John's gospel, John talks about uh, a, a pool, sort of a cleansing pool mm -hmm. um, called the Pool of Bethesda. Yeah. And we're told that it was by the Sheep's Gate in Jerusalem and that it had, you know, these colonnades uh, in the yeah. pool. And for centuries, you know, no one found them. And so they just assumed, oh, he's making it up. Um, but then in the 19th century, they actually discovered this pool. It wasn't until much later that they realized that it's the pool that John's talking about, but yeah. that's pretty confirmed. There's a, there's a real consensus now that actually, um, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. And somebody who lived later wouldn't have known that because Jerusalem got kind of destroyed by the Romans, uh, in around 70 AD. Um, so someone living after that wouldn't have known that that was even around. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's a little, I mean, there's so much more to say, but there's little bits of evidence like that that make us realise, you know, this guy really was around at the time. Yeah. Um, the, there's so much more to say, but I think, I think the best thing to say is, look, just read it and make a judgment call for yourself. That, that's how I can tell if someone, that's how I try to tell if someone's trustworthy. I listen to them and I, and I make up my mind. Yeah. I think the best way to do that with John is, you know, read him. Uh, does this does this ring true? Does this ring as, as some hoax, as that someone's just making up for fun, um, or not? So, lots more that you could talk about on why you can trust it. Um, but the best thing I think you can do is just read the gospel for yourself to make up your mind. Yeah. yeah, well, that's really helpful. Just giving us that kind of little glimpse of the idea that, like, there's historical um, landmarking that is true and that we'd later on found that these you know archaeology to kind of confirm it so that's at least that give us you know some confidence in the book um yeah so it yeah. sounds like and again uh, yeah. lots more to say but yeah <laughs> so it sounds like the takeaway message is just give him a go give him a chance um let him speak for himself um read john if you've never read it before um and yeah the, the link will be in the description box so that you can click on it so you can read John's gospel for yourself. And if you want to read it by yourself, feel free. If not, grab a friend and read it together. So sounds like a great way to do it. Yeah. All yeah, right. So yeah. um, Tom, thank you for coming onto my channel and chatting to us. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to thank you for your time and I'll catch you later. Thanks, Kit. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay.
Sorry. Well, that was like, you, yeah, you can ask that again and I can say it again if you'd like. Do you want to do that? Okay, okay. cool. Let's do it again. <laughs> I think it'll take a bit of time. Just, you can even start. Yeah, I mean, we can even just say that's a practice run. 